Well, it's that special time of the year again when the days get shorter, the nights get colder, and the Halloween candy that's been on shelves for like two months suddenly starts to sell out. That's right, it's almost Halloween, and that means Halloween specials. Although while we all know the classics like The Nightmare Before Christmas and It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, there are many others that have been quietly forgotten. That's why today, we'll be bringing them back from the dead in our look at 7 forgotten and underrated Halloween specials. Disney's Halloween Treat Our first entry is an interesting case of the content itself not being forgotten, but rather the way it was presented. Disney's Halloween Treat was a half-hour special that premiered in 1982, featuring a talking jack-o'-lantern narrating through classic, haunted, and frightening Disney moments. Some of the moments in question are Night on Bald Mountain from Fantasia, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow from The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, various creepy moments from classic Disney shorts like Pluto's Judgment Day, and several segments of scary villains from Disney's past. The opening is an orange colorized version of the classic 1929 Silly Symphony short, The Skeleton Dance, featuring its own original theme song. Later Disney Halloween specials, such as the appropriately named A Disney Halloween, incorporated segments from Disney's Halloween Street, essentially being a longer cut of the latter. Disney's Halloween Treat was broadcast throughout the rest of the 80s and into the mid-90s, later receiving a home video release. However, to this day, a DVD or Blu-ray version has not been released. Witch's Night Out Witch's Night Out is a 70s Canadian Halloween special that served as a sequel to a special from 1974 titled The Gift of Winter and features the vocal talent of Dan Aykroyd and Catherine O'Hara. This seems to be a special that many people remember, but aren't exactly sure if it was real or not. Well, rest assured, it was, and it went on to become a cult classic amongst Halloween special fans. The story takes place in any town, and follows a depressed witch who is summoned by a pair of children. The kids are upset that they aren't able to scare anybody on Halloween, and ask her for help. The witch turns them into their costumes, a werewolf and ghost, and sends them off to a party to scare people. The masses aren't too accepting of the monsters though, and chase them away, causing the witch to lose her wand and chaos to run amok. Luckily, after some antics, she's able to get it back and the town accepts her. The film then ends with a very 70s disco party. It's a rather dated film, but still a fun one that captures the essence of the season. Apparently, there's a stage version in the works. However, there is limited info available about this, so perhaps it's just a rumor. Ernest Scared Stupid Ernest P. Worrell was a character created by Nashville-based advertisers Jerry Cardin and John Cherry and portrayed by the late Jim Varney, whom many may recognize as the voice of Slinky Dog from the Toy Story films. The character was a dim-witted southern man who always had good intentions and starred in dozens of commercials. Ernest became so popular that he eventually ascended into film, with his first being Ernest Goes to Camp. In total, he starred in about nine feature films, one of them being Halloween-themed, titled Ernest Scared Stupid. The plot opens in the 19th century where an evil troll had been turning children into wooden dolls in the town of Briarville, Missouri. The village elder is able to seal away the troll underneath an oak tree so that he can never terrorize children again. Later, in the 1990s, the village elder's descendant, Ernest, is helping the neighborhood kids with their haunted house. After some bullies destroy it, he helps the kids build a tree house instead, right on the very oak tree where the troll is sealed. Despite the film being a silly comedy with Ernest, there are actually some rather scary moments. The design of the troll is rather nasty looking, and the scenes where he turns the children into dolls is downright nightmare inducing. <laughs> Many children from the 90s were understandably freaked out by this film, even to this day. But if anything, that just makes this film more enjoyable. It's a funny, scary adventure that just oozes Halloween. Don't forget this one. Mary 
Mad Monster Party. Rankin Bass is a company most notably known for their stop-motion adaptations of classical Christmas stories, such as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Little Drummer Boy, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. However, unknown to many, they actually took a crack at creating stop-motion films centered around another holiday, Halloween. Mad Monster Party is the studio's first and only attempt at creating a Halloween-themed film, and though it flew under the radar for the most part, it became a cult classic over time. The film follows Baron Boris von Frankenstein, voiced by Boris Karloff himself, who has achieved the secret to total destruction and notifies all the monsters in the Isle of Evil to come celebrate the occasion. He plans to use the event to announce his retirement as head of the worldwide organization of monsters. The guest list features many monster icons, such as Count Dracula, the Invisible Man, the Wolf Man, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and even the creature from the Black Lagoon. Despite being a rather silly Halloween-themed film, the plot actually becomes pretty deep and turns into a struggle for power and touches on the fragile nature of life. It's not your standard spooky film, but that's why it's a cult classic. Luckily, the film hasn't been forgotten by its current owners, Lionsgate, who have released a special edition DVD and Blu-ray edition. Go and give it a watch this Halloween season if you haven't. The Halloween Tree Based upon the Ray Bradbury novel of the same name, The Halloween Tree is a 1993 TV movie made by Hanna-Barbera. Following the same general plot of the book, the film focuses on a group of trick-or-treating children who learn the mysterious origins of Halloween when one of their friends is spirited away by a mysterious force. The special was incredibly well received by critics and audiences alike, even by the novel's author Ray Bradbury, who exclaimed that it's one of the finest productions of my work I've ever seen. This quote was even put on the poster of the film to highlight this. Bradbury actually stars as the narrator of the film, with Leonard Nimoy appearing as the children's guide, Mr. Carapace Clavicle Moundshroud. Try saying that name five times fast. Despite the film being well received, imaginative, and even quite scary, it flew under the radar for many years, barely being discussed. Luckily, lists such as this have been gaining traction in the past few years, and the Halloween tree almost always appears in some form or another. Let's hope this gets more people to check it out this year. It used to air yearly on Cartoon Network, so if it does so this year or any subsequent years, be sure to give it a watch. Did I mention it won an Emmy for Outstanding Writing? Halloween is Grinch Night. Christmas isn't the only holiday that the Grinch has left his nasty mark on. Halloween is Grinch Night is an often forgotten Dr. Seuss special starring the titular Grinch in one of his few appearances. Many regard this film as a prequel due to the fact that the Grinch is still an asshole in this, whereas at the end of the Christmas special, he changes his wicked ways. The story takes place in Whoville on a particularly horrible night known as Grinch Night. The Grinch goes out of his way to terrorize the Who's, all because a sour sweet wind blows through the air, causing animals to howl and annoy the Grinch. A young Who is whisked away by the wind and finds himself in front of the Grinch, who is on his way to bring a large weapon called the Paraphernalia Wagon down to Whoville. The Who's try to stall the Grinch, who eventually becomes annoyed enough to unleash his weapon on him. What happens next is what can essentially be described as an acid trip that doesn't even make sense in the weird world of Dr. Seuss. The imagery and disturbing tone in this scene is very reminiscent of the pink elephant scene from Dumbo in the sense that it could be rather upsetting for children. In the end, the Who does not stand down and stalls the Grinch just long enough for the sour sweet wind to die down, causing the Grinch to return to the top of his mountain. While pushing the wagon back up the hill, the Grinch ominously states that the wind will return and Grinch night will come once again. But that wind will be coming back someday. I'll be coming back. Someday. <laughs>
Despite being rather unknown, it turns out that Halloween as Grinch Night was actually the favorite Grinch special of Dr. Seuss himself, even more so than the timeless How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Frankenweenie While many may know this film by its 2012 stop motion remake, Frankenweenie actually originated as a short live action film made in 1984. Many mistakenly believe this to be Tim Burton's first live-action short film, but that title actually goes to his adaption of Hansel and Gretel, which aired once on the Disney Channel on Halloween night in 1982, and then never again. Frank and Weenie fared a bit better, receiving a home media release and, of course, being remade almost 30 years later. The original short film was actually included in the DVD release of the remake, as well as in The Nightmare Before Christmas. The story follows a young Victor Frankenstein, who loves to create movies with his dog Sparky. Unfortunately, Sparky is hit by a car and killed, leading Victor to attempt to bring his beloved pet back to life using electricity. It works, and for a time, Victor and Sparky are able to be together happily. However, the neighbors are terrified by this, thinking of the reanimated Sparky as a monster. He's chased away by an angry mob to a miniature golf course where he hides in a windmill. The windmill is accidentally set on fire, and Victor gets trapped inside, only to be saved by Sparky, who gets crushed under the collapsing windmill. The mob realizes the error of their ways, and use their cars and jumper cables to revive the dog. Victor and Sparky live happily ever after, in a weird living dead companionship. Anybody who has looked into Tim Burton's early history knows that he had a rather rocky relationship with Disney at the beginning. Following the completion of Frankenweenie, Burton was fired from the company as they claimed that he had wasted company resources and that the film was not suitable for a young audience. It was initially planned to be shown before a summer re-release of The Jungle Book, but was shelved. Burton was then hired by Paul Rubens to create Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and his feature-length film career was jump-started. Despite their initial relationship, Disney and Burton would go on to create many films together in the future, including the remake of the initial film that led to Burton's firing. While Frankenweenie isn't specifically a Halloween film, it's definitely an enjoyable homage to Frankenstein to enjoy during the October month, or any time of the year if you're looking for some reanimated fun. <laughs> 